Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, we will look at installing the ZAMP server application. As mentioned before, ZAMP is the most popular PHP development environment, and the letters really stand for Apache, which is the web server, MariaDB or MySQL, PHP, and Perl. Here I have navigated to the website and a link, uh, well, a direct link to the download page is included in the resources for this video. But here it is apachefriends.org. And from here we can go to download and proceed to download ZAMP free of cost as it is open source and free for public use. So I'll just go ahead and download that and we can reconvene when that process is completed. Having completed the download, we will be met with the setup and it's fairly straightforward. I'll just go ahead and click next. We don't have to change anything here as all of these are either essential or very nice to have. As you can see, the Apache is by default grayed out because it makes no sense to install ZAMP without Apache, but we can leave everything else ticked and we can just go ahead and click next. We can go ahead and proceed with that default folder. If you have another folder that you wish to use, then that's fine. But essentially, this is where all of the server, PHP, and MySQL files will be deployed to, and ultimately where we will need to put our sites for hosting on the web server. But we will just click Next and go ahead and proceed through the installation. All right, so here we see that Bitnami is going ahead and promoting some modules to us for ZAMP. We don't need those right now, but these are like ready-made applications for us, but we don't need those right now. So we can just go ahead and click next to go ahead and install. At the end of this setup process, we can just go ahead and finish and we can choose, well, our language. I'm sure they have language packs for if you're neither a, English speaker or a German speaker. Now at the end of the setup, they asked us if we wanted to launch a control panel to which we said yes. And from here, we can actually start our services individually. Now, as I start them, I'll give a, sh a brief explanation as to what each service does. Apache is our web service. And essentially this Apache service is what allows us to serve up our PHP or Perl, or there are other languages that could be hosted on Apache, but since we're doing a PHP class, we'll focus on PHP. And without this service running, our PHP code simply will not work. So we'll be running queries to the database using PHP. We'll be trying to display certain information and run certain maybe logic and business logic using PHP. But if our web server, which is called Apache, is not started, then all of this will be null and void. So we want to start Apache firstly, and you may be asked to allow access. You can go ahead and do that. It's a local server, so there should be little to no harm. Also, we should note that Apache server by default uses port 80 which is the default HTTP port, also 443, which is the default SSL port. Those can be configured because there might be a situation where you have conflicting web servers using port 80. And of course, once they're conflicting, then neither will work. So you may need to change one to facilitate the other. So uh, since Apache is the only one we have that is active on this machine, port 80 is our default port. The next service that is very essential is the MySQL service. Now, MySQL is a database server. Apache is a web server. MySQL is a database server. Now, MySQL needs to be enabled for us to facilitate offline storage of data. Offline storage of data means that if a user, for instance, registers for a website, once they click that submit button, that data that they entered in the registration form needs to be stored somewhere. And that is the purpose of MySQL in the whole LAMP stack. So MySQL needs to be started and we'll just go ahead and click start. And once again, allow access. 
And once it's in the green, you know it has been started successfully and the default port for my SQL is 3306. Now FileZilla is actually an FTP client which would allow us to upload our files to some hosting agent. So when we get to the point where we're actually going to upload our website to a cPanel or any other web host, then we will definitely need to use FileZilla. But for now, we don't need to start FileZilla. And Tomcat is also another web server, but it is usually used for Java and other languages. In this situation, we already have Apache, so we don't need Tomcat. Now, having enabled our essential services, we can verify that the Apache web service is enabled by just going back to our browser and looking for local host. So local host is the default name for the machine you're using. If you've never done networking, then, then that would be new knowledge. So any machine you're on is referred to as local host. And if your web server is running, typing local host into your browser will route you to the default page that would be served up by your Apache server. Now, in the case of ZAMP, because based on the flavor of the Apache implementation you're using, you may get a different default page. In the case of ZAMP, this is that default page and it's mainly informational. You can read through it and see what it's about but essentially it's for informational purposes. And the next thing we want to verify is that our MySQL service is started properly. And to do that, we can go ahead and click on PHP My Admin. So you'll see that you have a bunch of links here. You can click on PHP Info. I just middle clicked to open it in a new tab and we can open PHP My Admin. So PHP Info shows you the PHP version that you're working with, which is 7. 0.1.31 and it gives you some other information as to what is enabled and what you may have access to through this installation and implementation. If you scroll down, you will also see a few details on the Apache environment. And one of the very important parts would be where the folder paths are. So they show you that the document root is at C ZAMP HD docs. We'll go to that in a few, but just take note of this path. It means that any PHP application that you're about to build needs to be hosted in this path in order for Apache to be able to serve it up and treat it with the regard it needs to be treated with. And if you continue to scroll through, you'll see reference being made to different modules that are enabled. Some of them are important. Some of them you can look at at a later time. And right now we'll just skip ahead and look at our MySQL implementation, which is shown to us by the tool PHP My Admin. Now, PHP My Admin is a tool that was given to us along with our installation, and it is a web-based MySQL administration tool, MySQL database administration tool. So you notice that it makes reference to a server at 127.0.0.1. So this IP address actually resolves to localhost or the other way around. Localhost resolves to the IP address 127.0.0.1. So that's some good knowledge to have if you ever want to browse to the web server on your machine, that is the local machine that you're using, then you want to either say localhost or you can directly type in the IP address 127.0.0.1. Now, in the case of phpMyAdmin, it's actually showing us all of the databases that are currently in our MySQL installation. So that's just verifying that my SQL is running properly. And if I want to create a new database or make modifications to an existing one, this is where all of that magic can happen. Now, a point to note is that when you're using PHP, my admin, sorry, if you're using ZAMP, then you'll see reference being made to MySQL sometimes, and you'll see reference being made to MariaDB. What happens is that it's essentially the same server, it's the same protocol, but one is a spin off of the other. So MySQL was around, and then MariaDB is a spin off of MySQL based on the same technology, maybe just a differing philosophy. So you'll see both of them being used and touted in the PHP development sphere, web sphere, but essentially 
the principles remain the same. They are both very popular databases used with PHP to build dynamic web applications. Now I'm going to do something and I'm going to create my own page inside of the Apache web server. So I'm going to navigate to the path, which was C slash ZAMP, and there it is. And we see a number of folders, including the PHP, the MySQL, and the PHP my admin. I would advise you not to trouble any of these unless you know exactly what you're doing, but you don't have to move or modify anything in this folder. But we want to target HDDocs because this is our folder to put in what we want. Now, in our web server, we will see that we have a page called php index.php. Now, this principle is pretty much widespread across every, if most, if not all web servers. The first page needs to be called index dot some extension. It could be index.html. In the case of Microsoft development, it's index.aspx, but in this case, it's index.php. The fact remains that if you have a web application developing, the first page that you want to be processed needs to be called index.php. And that is why if you go to facebook.com, a page comes up even though you didn't specify slash this page dot PHP. So that is exactly how web servers work. If you want the first page to be rendered, it needs to be called index dot some extension, and in this case, PHP. So what I'm going to do, and this index dot PHP is what comes up when we navigate to localhost or rather it has routing rules that navigate us to the dashboard folder. And if I take a look inside of the dashboard folder, then you would see that in the dashboard folder, there's also an index page. And this index page is actually an HTML file. So that just drives home the fact that the page just really needs to be called index, the extension. Well, we can work on that. So in this case, we're either working with index.php or index.html. So taking from that example, having dashboard, what I'm going to do is create a new folder and I'm going to call it new site. And inside of new site, I'm going to create a new file, just a text document, and I'm going to call it index.php. Now the purpose behind just creating this folder and this file is based on the principle of dashboard. We saw that when we navigated to localhost by itself, and I'll just do it again, it would have routed to localhost slash dashboard. That's probably because in our index.php file here, there's some logic that would reroute it to another path. And that path being localhost slash dashboard means that localhost represents hddocs and then the slash dashboard represents some folder inside of hddocs. And so that's a principle that we'll use going forward. Any site or application that we're going to be building inside of our Apache server, we need to put it in a folder. And of course, the first name, the first file in that folder must be index. So we're following that principle here where we create a new site and inside new site, we created some file called index.php. And I'll just quickly edit this file and I'll just say, hello world, the universally acceptable IT phrase. And so the supposition is that if I say localhost slash new site, then I should see something rendered in my browser saying hello world as I just depicted in my document. Actually, I just realized that this is index.php.txt because it's still a text document. So I'm just going to quickly edit the file extension. I'll just say, go to view and say, file name extension, so it's displayed. So you see it's index.php.txt. I don't want .txt, I just want .php. So I'll just remove that. And now it will be a PHP file. I can ignore this warning because I know what I'm doing. And so Windows is telling us it's a PHP file. So I'll go ahead and navigate to localhost slash new site. 
and there we see hello world like we just typed out in our document. So as you can tell, I have no real tools to edit. It's, it's very annoying here using PHP and using Notepad, and it can become quite complicated using Notepad. Uh, but for our best purposes, or at least for the purposes of this exercise, we see here that we have accomplished and learned how to use our Apache server. And so in the next exercise or two, we will be installing relevant tools to help us expedite our development processes.